few weeks, I've been going back and replaying uh, the older Final Fantasy games, specifically Final Fantasy 7 through 9, because as much as I played them when I was younger, I never really got very far. I was really terrible at them. I'd always get stuck on a boss, either at the end of the first disc or the second disc, or uh, if I was lucky, I would get to the third disc, but at some point, I would always get stuck on a boss and would have to start over at some point. Uh, I played them a lot. I loved Final Fantasy. I still like Final Fantasy, but on those games, actually on every Final Fantasy game, I've never gotten very far. So I decided to take advantage of the fact that Final Fantasy 7 through 9, 7, 8, 9 have been kind of remastered and put on both the PS4 uh, and on Steam with cheats that make playing the game a little easier to do, and I really just wanted to experience the story because I've never experienced the full story, so I wanted to take advantage of that, and I kind of wanted to take a moment just to talk about them. Uh, Final Fantasy 7, I don't understand the hype for this game. It's not that I didn't like it, because I did. But I don't understand why it's looked at as, like, the holy grail of video games or the holy grail of RPGs. I mean, it was okay. It wasn't anything great. It didn't blow my mind. Some of it that I did like was I liked the personal story of the characters, uh, specifically the main characters, because I feel like the side characters had, like, little ties and links to the main story. But overall, they were just kind of there. They didn't really have a whole lot of, I, I feel, a whole lot of purpose or reason to be there aside from, hey, we're going to go stop Sephiroth. Okay, great. Um, but the specific, but specifically the main characters, uh, Cloud, Barrett, Tifa, Aerith, uh, I really liked their story. I think my favorite part of the game was when Tifa and Cloud were in the live stream and they're kind of piecing together their past. I thought that was a really good story. I also don't understand what the, the big hype is with Sephiroth. Uh, I mean, in the game, he didn't really do all that much. And when it was him, it wasn't really him. It was uh, Sephiroth clones or Genova acting as Sephiroth. So I don't really know. And, and even then, it wasn't like, oh, man, this is so cool. I don't know why Sephiroth is looked at as this total badass villain. I mean, yeah, the whole fire scene and the song is really cool, but I don't know why that's such a big deal. My issue, my biggest issue with Sephiroth is that both in playing the game, everyone telling you this, and also fans who have played the game telling you this, uh, you're told over and over, Sephiroth is so awesome, you're told this. Well, I have a big problem in stories when I, I'm a big fan of show don't tell. When you're telling a story, you don't tell someone that they're, that you don't tell the reader or the viewer that they're cool. You show that this character is cool. You show why this character is cool. Uh, or you show why this character is whatever it is you're saying this character is. You don't just say it, you show it. And that's what Sephiroth was. They sh they didn't really show why Sephiroth was cool. They just kept saying, Sephiroth is awesome. Uh, and it didn't really work for me. I didn't know why Sephiroth was supposed to be this awesome character. Personally, I thought the best bad guys in the uh, game were Rufus and the Turks. I thought they were really cool, and I also thought they were really cool in Advent Children. I went back and watched Advent Children after I beat Final Fantasy VII. Now that I have actual full context of what happened in the game to watch the, uh, the movie, which I know not a lot of people like, but I still enjoyed it. I thought it was a really cool movie. Uh, but yeah, Rufus and the Turks, both in the game and in the uh, movie, I thought they were really cool characters. So I would actually be more interested in seeing more focus on them as villains than on Sephiroth. Final Fantasy VIII, it was okay. Uh, the story was a little too... I don't know. The story was a little too everything wrapped up in a nice bow. It was a little too... I, I don't know the word. I want to say cutesy. I want to say... Uh, a little too overly romantic. I don't know what the right word, I just, I didn't like it that much, but specifically what I didn't like about Final Fantasy VIII was the junction system. Oh my god, did I hate the junction system with a passion. It was the worst thing ever. Whoever thought of that should really reassess their priorities or something. I don't know. It was a terrible system. I, I did not like it. It made the game a chore to play. Um, but it did have a couple of cool things in it. Uh, I really liked the gun blades as weapons. I thought that was a really cool concept uh, for a weapon. I thought it was. I thought the you know the idea of these you know uh, gardens of of mercenaries was a really cool idea. Especially like I think my favorite part of the entire game was the battle of the gardens when they're basically ramming into each other and their uh, forces going to either side. I thought that was really cool to see. But overall, it was just kind of okay. My biggest 
my biggest comment with Final Fantasy VIII is specifically the main villain, Ultimisha. Ultimisha didn't really have a whole lot of character to her unless you take into account the, it's and it's a fan theory that, that I checked out after I kind of came to this conclusion playing it. Uh, apparently it's a fan theory, others have had the same conclusion, that Ultimisha is actually Rhinoa in the future. There's a lot of little clues and little links that kind of support this theory that Ultimisha is actually Rhinoa, um, and I think that works, and I think that would make both Ultimisha and the story in general a lot better. Uh, a much better story. It gives Ultimisha more of a background, it gives her more motivation, it gives, uh, it makes the entire story a little bit more personal than just random evil sorcerers trying to destroy the world through time compression. If Ultimisha isn't Rhinoa, then it's, this, this story is just ultimately not that good. Final Fantasy IX. I had so much fun playing Final Fantasy IX, and that's saying something because when I say I played these games, I played them I binge played them through from 7 through 9, and I don't ever recommend anyone else doing that because it's really a taxing uh, experience because I like Final Fantasy, but I, I guess I don't like Final Fantasy that much, and after playing three solid games of it, I was really just kind of over it. So to say that I really enjoyed playing Final Fantasy 9 after playing 7 and 8 back to back is saying something. Um, I really like the style of it. I like the kind of fantasy steampunk uh, setting. It was just a lot of fun. I also really like the story. Not only was it just a good Final Fantasy story, it was a good fantasy adventure. I had a lot of fun playing it. I loved uh, the characters of Zidane and Tantalus, uh, but uh, hey, I like, I like pirates and rogues and stuff, so that's not surprising. But also Vivi was awesome. Uh, I really, really enjoyed Final Fantasy IX. My biggest thing about Final Fantasy IX, though, was the end of the story. Up until maybe the the end of Disc 3, it's a pretty solid fantasy story, until the end of Disc 3 is, surprise, sci-fi sci alien clones. Uh, and it didn't really mesh well with the rest of it. It was, it was really just kind of jarring, and I didn't like that. Most of the other Final Fantasy games have elements of both fantasy and science fiction, um, you know, especially 7 and 8, and they're kind of, uh, they're kind of meshed well together, whereas Final Fantasy IX was solidly, uh, was solid fantasy, and then just, just kind of add in science fiction at the end, it was just kind of jarring and I didn't really like that. Not to say I didn't like the ending, I did, uh, but that element was just kind of, I, I didn't like it that much. Also, something about the Final Fantasy IX remaster, they did a really good job remastering it to not, to make it feel not dated like Final Fantasy VII and VIII does. Uh, the remasters playing them right now, they feel really dated, but playing Final Fantasy IX didn't feel dated. It felt more the the style of the game and the artwork of the game was more stylized than it was old. So I really liked that. The other reason I went back to play these Final Fantasy games was specifically to play Final Fantasy VII, because of course we have the Final Fantasy VII remake coming out, ideally, in 2017. And I wanted to play Final Fantasy VII so I actually could experience the game, have context of the game, before I play the remake in whatever incarnation it's going to be, whether it's going to be episodic, whatever it's going to be, how it's going to be, I don't know. But I wanted to have the experience of playing the original game before I played the remake. And after playing the game, I'm a little more excited about it because I think the story of Final Fantasy VII would translate really well to something with better graphics, better voice acting, uh, better mechanics. Uh, as much as I've enjoyed the uh, the take turn battle system in Final Fantasy, uh, after again, after playing 7 through 9 back to back, I'm really kind of over it. I definitely want a little bit more action in my, in my game. So uh, say what you want about me, about me being an action game junkie, whatever. Uh, the strategy for it was just kind of, I was kind of over it. So I'm actually kind of looking forward to that more action-oriented gameplay in the Final Fantasy VII Remake. So I think it'll translate really well, uh, the, the story and characters of the game, to a more, to an updated kind of visual to where it gives them the chance to be a little more serious, uh, whereas they could be serious in the old game, but they were little block characters and it didn't really translate as well. So I think it will translate a lot better into a, a more updated game. Uh, so I'm really looking forward to it. What are your favorite Final Fantasy games from the past and are you looking forward to the Final Fantasy VII Remake? Let me know in the comments and share the video so other people can join in the conversation. Check me out on all the internets and make sure you check out templeofgeek.com to see more of my content and other creators' work. Subscribe to my channel so we can geek out some more. Thanks for watching and have fun. One, so Captain America, Thor, Hulk.